Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA, Ethereal Clash of Souls, which had their big stress test weekend this weekend. It's just, it's just finishing up as we're talking right now. I'm your host, The Mangoose. Joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm fantastic, Mangoose. How you doing, man? What ah, a good weekend. <laughs> what a great weekend. Uh, as opposed to the last stress test, which lasted about two hours, this one went two days. Went the distance, man. Yeah, it went the absolutely. Distance. <laughs> it, it was absolutely amazing. I don't know um, if you guys got to play. Uh, it, it got it was opened up to everybody. Anybody could create an account and play at was it at, after a certain point on Saturday? It was I think it was like six o'clock Saturday night, roughly. Yeah, that we opened it up. That make an account, you get to play the game. That's there was no more newsletter. There was no any of that. It was just a matter of making an account and downloading the game. So everything was holding up. The back end was holding up. The servers were steady. Yeah. After we had that initial uh, issue with the back end, just mm -hmm. that there wasn't enough capacity to allow people to get into games. Once they got into games, it was fine. It was just a matter of that that initial step. So we pulled it down, quickly upgraded that thing, threw it back up, and then from there, there were no issues on the back end server side at all. Yeah. Then I know I personally played about, I don't know, 25, 30 games this weekend. Go. Like <laughs> I got to level 90. Hey, look at you. <laughs> look at me. I'm, coincidence, I'm level 92. Yeah, That's you know nice, what? Man. Pretty much everybody I ran into was level 90. <laughs> I guess everybody was playing their ass off. <laughs> oh, it was great times, though. I mean, like somebody asked in the Discord how, how it went. Um, I think my statement stands. There's room, definitely room for improvement. It's definitely pretty alpha. But mm -hmm. God, is it fun? Is it fun? Mm -hmm. It's one of those things of when it works, it works like really, really works that you you get it so enveloped in the game and all of the the elements of it that it's just so much fun. You forget about the time passing by. Even losing is fun because you can still have those those good moments where you felt impactful. And, mm -hmm. and it was just it's just a good experience overall, for sure. Yeah, it's um that that's a good point. It you get like a 45 minute game and it feels like it's been 15 minutes like. Mm -hmm. it's one of those games where you sit down to play like i'm gonna play for a couple hours and then like five six hours later you're like holy <laughs> shit like <laughs> is it dark outside what the hell happened uh-huh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i do that even working on the game sometimes i'll be sitting here working on it and i'll look over and be like oh it's dark uh okay yeah i should uh... <laughs> so i mean that's the big news is the stress test went great and uh then you guys posted a, a survey for people to fill out that did um do the stress test which will help you guys get more feedback most of the feedback you're getting is probably technical data i would i would think but you uh you posted that so you could probably get some um balanced feedback and such yeah so the from our back end perspective we can get a lot of information of the characters play rates their win rates which is the win rates is iffy because there's only seven characters yeah so you've <laughs> always got a win and a loss so that for now isn't it really important but we can get a lot of that information which items were built what the myths how like where um where the power spikes of certain myths were theoretically were like some of this stuff we can get through the back end but this survey is more intent of like what did you feel what uh, like you said aside from the technical aspects and the the pure number crunching what did it feel like to players who felt the most powerful who felt the weakest which ability right. felt the strongest stuff like that that's the kind of stuff we're looking for in the survey yeah um as far as the 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 hero that i felt was the strongest was iran mm. iran mm -hmm. can just be oppressive once he gets going he's he's pretty easy to kill early game but uh mm -hmm. man but if he gets a couple kills in that early game he will snowball through to the end no problem <laughs> <laughs> The last game I played, the, my final match, I, I picked a run and I'm all happy and stuff. And then I see that we load up. I'm looking at the enemy team. Funky Monkey, Fumo, yep. is on the enemy <laughs> team Iran. And I'm like, oh, my God. No. Please, God, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. When sure you see shit, Fumo on a run, I don't know me on Malaya. Same thing. <laughs> I, I don't know how he got, got there, but I was on my blue buff and he ganked me. <laughs> <laughs> like he had already taken like I talked to him afterwards he had already taken my purple <laughs> and portaled up to me while I was on blue there you go like how <laughs> like I destroy did, those walls mangoose it's about finding the pathways did not expect him <laughs> to 
to to show up there. And then he actually killed the blue buff. I, I got the buff because in, in Ethereal, whenever you kill a buff, it drops on the ground and you have to actually pick it up, which I've mm -hmm. seen a few people dropping buffs and then walking away. <laughs> you get you got to pick that thing up. But he got the kill, but I got the buff. But since he got the kill, I didn't get the level, and I thought I had my E leveled up, and you're right next to a tower there at blue. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, sweet. I can, I'm can. i going to pick him up with my E and toss him under the tower. I had no E. Nope. <laughs> he didn't kill me, thank God. He got me and down to like 10 health. but I think the majority of people that played this weekend all have stories like that. Oh, stories God, yeah. where, they could, where they could go to their friends tomorrow. They can go to their friends in the future. Like, so I played this game Ethereal one time, and this <laughs> crazy thing happened where this guy grabbed me and tossed me straight off a lane. Right? Like, that's that's a cool thing for for us but it just in general for the game is to have stories like that that's what you hear paragon players talk about all the time right i was playing rampage that one time and i picked up a rock and tossed it halfway across the map and got a kill <laughs> that's that's the stuff you strive for in the connection and the marketing aspect of the game is for people to tell tell those stories and get other people excited about the game even if they haven't played it yeah I, I will say I came back from that. I, I had to back after after that gank, but after that I I went through my jungle, and I was like I'm gonna try and catch him on his chonker. The uh you know the outside lane mm -hmm. minion gives you the most golden experience. I was hoping that I could steal that from him, but when I went over there it was Le there the enemy team Leah was on the chonker, did not notice me. I ran up, grabbed her, pitched her off the side of the edge. And I was like goodbye. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> and she died. <laughs> see that's that's the crazy stuff it's like I, I was seeing that all over the place this weekend of any of the games i was in any of the games i was watching is you'd see you'd find moments of that like where something's going on and someone just like surprise there you go i had one um i had one game i was in the enemy jungle taking their purple buff enemy talos came up saw me taking his purple buff i knew i couldn't win that fight straight up so i went over walked through the fire portal and backed up after i made it through so he came through the fire portal after me, but I wasn't there because I was now behind him. <laughs> and then just sat there and started wailing on him for a second while he's confused, trying to spin around, <laughs> trying to find where I am. Greatest thing ever, man. Oh, and I knew right afterwards, someone pinged me in the Discord saying fighting jelly knees is just unfair. And I was like, well, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, people are figuring stuff out about the game. Um, I will say this right up front. You guys are going to need one hell of a tutorial because... Like mm -hmm. we were discussing in the Discord, it is not Baby's first MOBA. It is no. <laughs> like if if Paragon was a step up from like Dota and LOL because of the three D aspect, this is an even bigger step up. There is so much that you need to know. Like I was telling you, I was in a game with somebody for forty minutes, and then I rotated. I jumped off the edge of Fire Lane down to Void Lane, and he was like, "Oh my God, you could just jump off the edge." <laughs> <laughs> like you've been playing this. Like why are you playing this game if you know nothing about it? Which yeah. I think is good. A lot of people come in that, that knew nothing about Ethereal and, and played it, but it was more fun playing with the people that <laughs> understood the game a little bit. At least knew like the myths and their abilities somewhat. I had a game, uh, two, one of the testers and I were on the same team, and there were a couple, it was early on that a couple of the people disconnected or AFK'd a couple minutes into the game. And he and I were holding our own 2v6, trying to like battle it out with these people that <laughs> were just learning the game. So it was just trying to like that give and take. And it's, I definitely agree with you. The tutorial is going to have to be insane yeah. to give people, the, to bring people up to speed of like what the core concepts of the game are, being that there are so many of them. But I definitely think it's something that we can do. It's definitely implementable. It just takes time. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about it because I, you know, of course, was recording footage to make videos out of, and I'm thinking I'm gonna have to explain all the abilities. I'm gonna have to explain the class ability, and I'm gonna have to explain um, the the myth passive or active abilities too. And I'm, there's so much that I'm gonna have to explain just to let people know what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you see Iran burst through a, a wall, and you're like, "What the hell? What the hell happened there?" You know. <laughs> Or suddenly Noxus goes from mid lane to fire lane. You're like, how the hell did she do that? Well, it's just, mm -hmm. her class ability lets her teleport around the map if she if she has little teleportation schedules, which confused the fuck out of me. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be a, a better UI element for that. I think for sure. Um, yeah, but overall, it was a great weekend for us. Right, going in, 
getting being able to one scale it up so we could allow anyone that wanted to come in to play is a huge mm -hmm. thing right because it very easily could have we opened the floodgates and then immediately afterwards it shuts right down right <laughs> like so that not happening is huge um but it's it gives us a lot of perspective of what to do what we need to work on going forward it gives a lot of perspective to the community of where the game's at how it's feeling how it plays getting their hands on it for the first time all that good stuff can you guys go into the numbers like how many how many people you guys had playing or no or is that like i can go into them very briefly i don't know all of them even okay. right now because some of that's still to be looked at um i know we sent out before we opened it up to everybody we sent out over four thousand keys to uh, people in the newsletter patreon whatever it may be we sent out over four thousand keys we opened it up to everybody i believe in total we saw somewhere around 1600 accounts created all right on um and then we had a pretty steady flow of players all day yesterday and then a, a decent amount today slightly less but definitely yeah, still enough say, to get some games going yesterday I, I didn't spend more than a minute in queue whenever i queued up mm -hmm. however whenever the queue popped that's something that you guys addressed already but if you didn't lock everything in you got booted back out if, if anybody on your team or the enemy team didn't lock their familiar battle spell and myth in there was no auto lock feature so you just left the lobby yeah and that was something i won't say that we expected but it was we figured that it would happen one time and then people would go like oh okay select all the things and that just wasn't the case um we, we saw the same people it happened multiple times over we saw people selecting their myth and their lane but skipping over the primary spell and familiar it was yeah. just this weird thing so we just decided you know what we're just gonna make it lock it in <laughs> do that <laughs> well i mean there was no message if you didn't lock everything in like was there a message i think i locked in every time now that i think uh honestly i know we talked about it so i couldn't tell you with 100 okay. certainty if there was or not so, but yeah i don't think there was any way for them to know why they were getting booted out of the lobby i know i was saying it in discord over and over please please lock in everything <laughs> it was so frustrating was that, please lock in please accept <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you guys fix that. The ex you could accept within three was well, like three seconds the last time you had to accept, <laughs> but this yeah. time it was much longer, <laughs> much nicer. I think that was I think that's the optimal time limit that you guys had this time. All right, perfect. As, as far as I'm concerned, of course. Yeah, opinions not too may long, vary. not too short. Just kind of trying to find that sweet spot for the AFK checks. Absolutely. I think now the the main thing that I would like to see in the game is chat. Mm -hmm. some kind of chat f function and that's something that our, our one of our programmers george is actively working on it okay. just wasn't at a state that we were comfortable putting it in for this yeah because we didn't want you to have one of the issues we've had with the chat system is delayed messages so for whatever reason you'll send a message <laughs> and it'll sit there and won't show up on other screens and then suddenly oh look there's the message and it's like well wait a second this is not so it's he's reworking that entire system and had to actually recode recode the whole thing. Yeah, it just didn't make it in time for this. But it's definitely one of the priorities we have going forward. I know with my luck, I would somebody would get a kill, and I'd be like, "Hey, great kill!" But then, or, or great job. And then what would happen <laughs> is they would later, delay. Hey, great job! Yeah, somebody die. yeah. somebody dies. Hey, great job! Did they think I'm being toxic? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, that needs to be there, and uh, some range indicators on some of the abilities would be nice as well. Uh, Marina's Siren's Song, I believe, comes to mind, and uh, Noxus's Lightbound Portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing that we're looking at is better range indicators and then just range in indicators across the board for the abilities Yeah, to make it really obvious where you can and can't hit with your abilities or basics or whatever it may be. I was kind of surprised at how far Siren's Song went. I thought it was very, very... Um, I thought it was shorter than it was. I was able to hit people from fairly far away with that thing it's it's a decent sized length cone but the width of the cone is fairly mm -hmm. is fairly small or the the radius of the cone rather so it, it's one of those deceptive abilities that you the lay if you hit it just right in the sweet spot you get a really good length on it but sometimes you're like just outside of the radius of the cone it's like i felt like that should have maybe hit them <laughs> i don't know by the way i think that's the highest disparity between risk and reward is marina sour and song because the reward, if you pull it off right, is almost all, usually a kill. Mm -hmm. But if you pull it off in the wrong instance, you're standing there 
singing while people are pel <laughs> pelting you in the face. So it's definitely um, even the initial responses I was seeing to the uh, survey that we put out. What for strongest myth and weakest myth? Marina was topping them on both charts, and oh, that was really? the funniest thing to be is I was just like. That makes so much sense to me based on how Marina works. <laughs> that it's like you're either well, you land that right click and it feels so good to just be like, you're all right here. I'm gonna let my team do the work for me right now. But you miss some of those abilities, and it's just like, what am I doing with my life? I'm the weakest person <laughs> on the planet. So it makes perfect sense to me. But it was just funny to see her top both charts. I warmed up to Marina this time around. I warmed up to I Marina. Saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Had some really good games with her head. One game, I don't know who, who my Dante was. I wish I would have checked the name, but holy crap. I set it I set him up for success early and he ran with it pretty hard. I mean that's, <laughs> that's the good. way it's supposed that's the way it's supposed to work. Absolutely. So I guess Mangus, what we can do is kind of go through that survey and hear the thoughts you have on it, and I can kind of give some general thoughts that I have as well. Yes, please. So let's see here. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, how did you hear about Ethereal Mangoose? <laughs> uh, Britic, actually. People might be surprised by that, but... There are a couple responses of people saying us, which I love to see. Oh, nice. So... Yeah, Britic was how I found found Ethereal a long time and ago. And I found it through you, so... It all comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess the biggest thing, Mangoose, is did you have fun overall? I mean, you played a lot of games, so... Oh, my absolutely. God, yes. See, that's awesome. I love I love that so much. <laughs> and which myth did you enjoy the most of them all? Ended up being Leah, of all things. Um, okay. I had not played her even in testing before the stress test. And uh, man, I, I people were afraid to jungle, it seemed. So I took mm -hmm. it upon myself to, to do some jungling. And wow, is she fun. Her I, ultimate I deals video. so much freaking damage. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw your video last night about the, the jumping off the lane and going straight down to void. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> I was dying laughing. Right on. So after all of that, after all of your games, who did you feel was the most powerful myth of them all? Iran. Iran. Okay. That's right. You said that. And I would probably agree with you. Uh, when Iran works, he works. Like, he just goes off. He yeah. grabs people. He, he, uh, it feels so good, but it feels so bad sometimes to be grabbed by the Iran. It's, and so it's the best ability in the game, but it's also the most buggy ability in the game. So yeah. it's kind of a <laughs> win or lose with that one. All right. And who did you feel was the least powerful? The least powerful? God, I forget what I said for that. I think I said Dante, but that's it. That really depends. An underfed Dante is the weakest thing on earth. A fed Dante will shred you. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, I think they're all pretty powerful. A uh, Malaya can be fairly weak depending on who's playing her, but she has by far the most outplay potential. So, oh, man, that's that's a that's a rough one. That's a rough one. I would I would have to say Dante, an underfed Dante. Yeah. And say I would say that this is another one that could simultaneously be the same character for most and least is Malaya. Malaya's core design is around being either the most fed person or feeding the other team to where you're going to be the most sufferable person on your team. Right. Right. And you I think we definitely saw that in games where if it was you either had a broken Malaya or a useless one, there really wasn't an in-between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, she's the only one I didn't get good gameplay footage of. Um, both times I played Malaya were right when you guys were going to do updates and ended up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like I was doing well with her, but. We saw uh, it. Mangus doing well on Malaya. Get him yeah, out. Get him yeah, out. Get, get, get him out of here. Yeah, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the outplay potential with her, with the with the dash, and then the bubble mm -hmm. that absorbs um, crowd control. Yeah, you can really do some crazy, crazy stuff with Malaya. And then you think she's dead, and she activates her ultimate, which makes her unkillable and gives her life steal. And all of a sudden, you're the one that's dead. <laughs> but they have to use that at exactly the right moment. Yep, it's only three seconds, so you have to press the button at the perfect instance to get it done. That that was probably the biggest brain move I made the entire 
stress test was on Malaya. I had an Iran using his charge to escape that speed boost. Mm-hmm. And I dashed in front of him and stopped. And he ran into <laughs> me and picked me up, which which interrupted his charge. <laughs> it's That's like, brilliant. pick me up if you want to, because I got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost full health and you're about dead. <laughs> but yeah, he didn't even throw me. He just spiked me into the ground because I think he even he was a little surprised that he was suddenly... <laughs> Had like, wait, somebody in his playing. hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It was good times. All right. How did you feel about the items, Mangoose? Did you feel like they were impactful? They weren't impactful? Too impactful? Some of them are too impactful. Um, I think overall, the, I mean, the items just felt like regular MOBA items. Some of them, though, like, um, what is it? Medusa's String, the uh, mm-hmm. ADC item that you stun with basic you, attack. They shoot you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little overpowered. Like, <laughs> like I was talking about an overfed Dante. An overfed Dante with that thing, you're not going to escape because he's yeah. going to. Oh, yeah, that that thing is harsh. That uh-huh. is, it does not feel good to play against. It yep. feels great to play with, of course. <laughs> but even playing with it, like I had a a really good Dante game actually, and I had a, of course picked up a Medusa string, and it just, I, I felt like I, it wasn't fair. Yeah. I could see, I definitely see that. Being able to stun somebody with a basic attack every, I think it's 25 seconds. Yeah. It's a little, a little nuts. <laughs> yeah, some of them and, need to be changed a little bit, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then a, for the, go ahead. Isn't there a melee one too? Heaven's Sword, doesn't that one knock pe- people up to? Heaven's every? Bleed, yeah. After four consecutive attacks on the same target, you knock them into the air. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> But Mangoose, you got to knock people up, dude. You got to add <laughs> all the extra CC to, to items. And then the pace of the game. What did you feel about the pace? I thought the pacing was great. I expect MOBAs to go about 30, 45 minutes. And I don't think I had a game last over 45 minutes. And what, like we've said before, the it, the time flies by. You can't believe that it wasn't 15 minutes when you're, when you're done. So mm-hmm. I think the pacing is actually really good. And it, it's more than that, like... Early there, there's an actual set early, mid, and late game mm-hmm. to it. Like er, there's definitely an early game where you're kind of iffy about what you want to do, but you can still make some pretty big plays. There's a mid game where you're starting to decide which way you're going to push and which objective you're going to take, like wyverns and and atropus and stuff, such. And then late game where everybody's at full build and you're just thrashing it out in big ass team fights. Yeah, For kind of what we've seen is that early game lasts about 10 minutes um and with and with that you kind of transition a little bit into the mid game once the first wyverns are starting to be taken yeah because then you're using the trolls to rotate from lane to lane you're using the wyverns to to boost your team and then once the like you hit 25 to 30 minutes you're into that late game segment where death timers are starting to get longer the atropos buff is is more easily easily taken by teams so they can push lanes out all that good stuff yeah yeah, I thought yeah, I thought the pacing was great. Awesome. And then for right clicks, what did you think? Who did you think was the most impactful right click of them all? Again, Marina. You... Marina's right click is really impactful. Talos's right click is deceptively impactful. Mm-hmm. Like you don't realize how much more damage you're going to do when you hit that right click. Yeah, uh, Talos, I think, was an interesting case in this stress test because I know a lot of people were excited to play Talos. And Talos is a fairly complicated myth to, p- to pick up the first time mm-hmm. because of those comboing of abilities and basics and right clicks. So there was a huge disparity in Talos players as well that I saw of you either were playing Talos and you you figured it out and you can do damage like nobody's business. Yeah. Or you're still trying to figure it out and you're not quite in the groove of how Talos's abilities combo with each other. Uh, uh, one thing about Talos, like... It didn't really confuse me that much having your ultimate on F and like just an ability mm. on R, except on Talos. I don't know okay. if it's because I got so excited that I was about to dive on top of somebody, <laughs> but I would hit R and then just stop in place and spin and do his bleed. Mm-hmm. And they would walk away and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> like that happened to me a couple times. And then what did you feel was the least impactful of the right clicks? Uh, I think Leah's. Uh, you don't, uh, it's impactful. You don't see the impact though. Like mm-hmm. the, her speed boost, she never use really uses it in combat because she would just get blown up. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, it, it's a great escape for her, but you're not going to use it as an engage. It's great for rotating between the lanes with her. But overall, I thought I thought that one was probably the most, the least effective one out of all of them. Yeah, I would probably agree with you. I think part of it is the it's in, intended to be a movement tool of like getting from place to place faster, whether it be flying across lanes, whether it be getting back to lane, whatever it is. And we saw it used either not at all or in weird places that weren't part of that. Yeah. And so I think it's just finding a way to make it feel better in that regard, to feel like it has a specific use case instead of just kind of the like, I just use it whenever it's up, like kind of deal <laughs> that it had. Uh, you were, I mean, you were talking about that video I made. Um, I definitely use it right there because I want. I saw that that Noxus was low in mid lane, mm. and I wanted to get there as fast as possible. So, but I, I knew if I used that as soon as I took off, that I would get there faster. But it would be the damage thing would be gone by the time I actually arrived. Yeah, and so it's finding a way to make those plays more accessible without it just being you either holding it all the time, you hold it for 20 minutes to get one play like that. Right. Or it's just finding that balance. Uh, how did you feel about the accessibility of information for Ethereal? I think it's good. I think that it's very easy to access information about the game, but people I, I, people aren't. <laughs> they aren't doing it. So, there, I mean, there might be a problem there. Um, it's... The, Here's the bad, here's the thing, it's it's pretty alpha, so I wouldn't expect all kinds of tutorials and videos and stuff up on the on the client. Mm -hmm. I think that would be very helpful down the road. But yeah, if you, if you want information on Ethereum, you're going to have to like come to us or go to the website or go into the Discord. Yeah, and I think that's the thing as well, is the learn tab for this stress test wasn't accessible. It will be going forward. So there's actually will be a dedicated place for people to go on the client itself that they can look at videos, tutorials, whatever it may be. Um, so I would think that's the one place that we could probably, we could definitely improve the accessibility to information is on the client itself. That is, like I said, it's coming. But for the most part, I would agree with you. I think, granted, I'm the one who made a lot of the videos for us. So I'm <laughs> yeah. going to be like, yeah, of course they were accessible, right? Like, <laughs> um, but the, the, or information was there. If people wanted to find the information, they could. And I think that's part of it is too, is, is wanting to go out and look on those some of those other places for the information. Right. And like I said, it's, it's not baby's first MOBA. You're going to have mm -hmm. to learn a little bit before you step into Ethereum. Yeah, absolutely. A great example, I had a Dante. I was supporting his Marina, and he's standing directly in front of the enemy tower. Iran comes running up, and I'm like, Come on, roll. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. He just stood there. Iran picks him up, tosses him under the tower. I'm like, does he not know that Iran can just grab him and chuck him somewhere? Yeah. Perfect. No amount of shielding is going to. No, no, there's nothing to do about that one. That's for sure. <laughs> Man, Goose, what skill level would you say you play at? Oh, I think I said experienced, but casual. Okay. And that's from what I saw earlier. It seems to be the majority of answers are the experienced and casual. Yeah. Which is good to see for, like you said, as early as it is and not being baby's first MOBA, having experienced players come in helps a lot in kind of making sure that the players that are in the stress test have at least a general sense of what they're trying to do. Inexperienced and casual, I feel like would be really hard to step in at the current moment. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, it's not baby's first MOBA. And MOBAs as a whole are not really baby's first MOBA. So it's yeah. like even like extra scaled up from there. So it's definitely something to improve on, but it's good to see that the majority of players were in that experienced and casual category. I mean, I think that's what people like about MOBAs though, is that you have to have a, a certain amount of knowledge and skill to be able to play them effectively. Mm -hmm. And people actually enjoy that. Um, look at how here's the storm that tried to simplify things and they didn't really it didn't really work out for them so much but dota 2 which is extremely involved and you have to know a lot of crap for that yeah it's and taken that's, off yeah i would almost i wouldn't go quite as far to say that ethereal is the dota of the 3d moba space but it's definitely closer to the complexity of dota or the 3d moba space than than the others that are out there right now right and then I guess, Mangus, the final two questions that I'll lump into one is, do you think Ethereal is ready to move into a more consistent release? Why or why not? 
I think so. If it can still be developed effectively behind the scenes, I don't know how any of that works, really. I would hate to see that the game get released and then we don't see many improvements because everybody's too busy like maintaining the 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 game state mm -hmm. i would rather see that it come out in short bursts like this like the stress test weekend and you know see great improvement over those bursts but if it can be worked on like if it if if improvements can be constantly made and it can come in like the pre the well the alpha i guess could come out i, I would love to see that i think it's in a state where it's really fun and it's very playable um but people would have to understand that it is an alpha and that it's not it's not a triple a alpha where they're just saying alpha so they can excuse themselves from shit and i am so glad you brought that that specific part up because that's from the developer side of things is one of the most frustrating parts is seeing these triple a companies like the call of duty they'll come out with like the alpha two months before release it's like, this is not an alpha. This is not an alpha. <laughs> yeah. Right? And it makes it harder for us to call ours an alpha and have it be actually in, in that state. Because then people are going like, well, but Call of Duty's alpha was way better than this. What are you doing if you yeah. don't have an alpha up to that par? So it's a hard it's a hard balance to walk anyway of the, the development cycles before a full release. So I, I agree with you. I think that we can do short bursts that would be accessible um, and go from there. Yeah, vast majority of people don't give a good goddamn that you guys are an indie company. They just, mm -hmm. they want results. They want a game that functions well and they're going to compare you to AAA Studios. So if you're not up to that quality, then you're probably going to get some shitty reviews. Yeah. And it's, and we're slowly improving a lot of those aspects, right, of the... The big one that we couldn't talk about last week, but we can now that because it was in the stress test, is those damage feedback, the red bursts on your character. Um, something that is relatively small, but can help in that just general feedback of how much damage you're taking, when you're taking damage, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's nice. I still saw some people saying that they didn't realize when they were getting hit as much. Um, I think some, some better sound effects mm -hmm. would, would, would help with that. I do, I do really like the uh, the glowing. Whenever you, you like, you can tell when you hit somebody because they're glowing, and you tell when you're getting hit. But you gotta yeah. pay gotta pay pretty close attention. I think I think audio cues would help out quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And the animations, right? We've got the mocap suit that we're working on animations for. That'll help a ton as well into bringing the game more up to that those standards that people expect from the like the triple A's and and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the Malaya climbing animation crack me up so bad like i don't know how else you would do that animation but it looked exactly like the old nintendo spider-man like, <laughs> <da, da>, <laughs> like, going, going up a wall man that throws me back man <laughs> yeah don't think that i i didn't intentionally climb up some stuff that i could cut her out of so that i could put her in the spider-man game that's definitely can't coming. wait for the man for the mangus video to come out now put her on rampage everything <laughs> i love it i can't wait for that one mangus please <laughs> please do it for me oh my goodness but yeah mangus what were your i guess final thoughts about the stress test as a whole things you enjoyed didn't enjoy all that good stuff i mean it was way more successful than i thought it was going to be i thought you guys were going to get more time out of this one, but I didn't think you were going to go the distance, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. And you did. And not only did you go to dis the distance, but you opened it up to even to like way more people than than was originally planned. And I know I had a ton of fun. I don't know about everybody else. I know some people were complaining that they couldn't get into games. Um, I don't know what that was about. So I would have to you know, find out and, and, and talk to some more people about why they weren't able to get into games and such. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I can really only speak from my experiences right now. And I had zero trouble getting into games. Um, and every game I got into, I just had a, an absolute blast. And the only times that it crashed was when you guys were going to, were doing a hot fix update. And I can, I, I know some of the details about why 
Some people weren't able to get into games. I'm sure there are outliers that I just don't know. But some of those were addressed in the patch overnight. So the patch that we did, we pulled down the servers and actually implemented a full patch overnight to fix bugs and issues and crashes that we were getting. Um, so those were fixed. Basically, as soon as we were aware about them, we were working on them and then just waited for a, a good moment, for lack of a better way to put it, to implement those fixes that we had. Um, there was, of course, the, we talked about the queue problem of getting into game with acceptances and then dropping mm -hmm. out of myth select. That was part of it. So we we implemented the, that auto lock feature to try and alleviate some of those issues as well. So it's there's definitely things that we can implement and iterate on to make it more impactful into the future. But from what we saw, the people that got into game enjoyed it. Right. And I think that's a huge thing for us is that the, the rest of that early stuff is relatively easy to tweak and fix and change to make it more accessible for people. And fixing crashes is always something that we're going we're going to put priority into. But if the game was bad and people weren't having fun playing the game, that's a whole <laughs> separate problem. Yeah. And so seeing that the game was fun and people enjoyed the game, but these early things were a problem, right. that's in our book, that's a relative win, right? Because that's all stuff we can fix and change and iterate on. I did see a few people that it seemed like they rage quit, but you never really know with an alpha game. Like I know a lot of people were talking about, we need to be able to report people, but you, especially with an alpha game, I don't think that's really necessary because you never really know if they actually rage quit or if, you know, the game just crashed on them. Mm -hmm. Some Absolutely. of them, it's, you know, it's kind of obvious that it was a rage quit. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I'm sure those people didn't have a great time, but I, it's not. It, that's going to be the catchphrase now. It's not baby's first MOBA. If people came into this expecting it to be Call of Duty or if they came into it expecting that it was going to be exactly like Paragon or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not. There's It's way more involved than Paragon ever was. Yeah. Just not as many myths to know. Soon. We're adding. We're working on a man. Literally <laughs> as soon as we can get more in there. Absolutely. Can't wait for that Grognark. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about with Grognark as I was playing today is when people escape through portals. <laughs> Not when I put a wall right there. Yep. You see him walking toward the portal and just, oh, it's hard and your escape route's out. <laughs> Dang it, man. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> I guess you'll have to just jump off the map. <laughs> That's where you and Iran tag team and you just block <laughs> off portals. Iran grabs them and tosses them over. That's going to be a good one too. hundred percent. Yeah. I can't wait to see some of the interactions Iran, uh, Grognark creates with the myths we already have in the game too. Iran can be outmaneuvered. People didn't seem to realize that one too. Like you can, <laughs> like once he's going, he can't stop. He can't just turn mm -hmm. on a dime. So if you can like roll past him or dash through him or, anything like that or dash around him yeah he's, he's not going to hit that grab and you're going to be he's just going to be st and he's out of position running. from then on yeah <laughs> uh i had a game both my i was playing iran and the other team had an iran and we both started charging at the same time and did like circles around each other trying to be the one to grab the other one it was so funny in my head i was hearing the music like like absolutely chasing each other's <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and then like we finally realized we didn't want to be the one getting grabbed so we both ran back towards our side and waited for cooldown and then ran and did it again back in circles against <laughs> each other <laughs> that's great i guess mangus to close it out because i don't know if you have unless you have anything else to talk about what were some of like the moments that of the games that you played that you enjoyed the most i know you've talked about a couple of them already yeah th that marina one i just that seems like such a simple thing, but dashing in front of an Iran that's trying to escape, that was so much fun. I love that mm -hmm. so much. Um, I played Noxus in, in setting up a portal in fire lane from my lane and then ro just rotating out of freaking nowhere. That was awesome. That was a, ro a lot of fun. And just Leah just flying around and you just spotted a low target. Now, I'm going to extend this a little bit, but... I think there's the fun way to play, and then there's the correct way to play. Especially with Leah, I almost always did the fun way, which is to dive bomb people from the sky. However, uh -huh. I think it's probably far more effective to just land, start attacking them, and then when they try to escape, that's when you <laughs> use your stun. 
but it's just too much fun to dive people out of the air. Absolutely. Same with a run. It's too much fun to just charge into somebody and grab them and pick them up. Probably a lot more effective to actually get in there, deal some damage, and then when they try to escape, that's when you pick them up and throw them. Yeah. But ain't nobody <laughs> going to do that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> I think for me, one of the coolest moments where I, I guess I saw the potential of the of the cooperation aspects of the game is we had Aaliyah, Noxus, and Iran. I was Iran, um, and it was late game team fight. We're going at it. Teams are going at each other. We had a perfect Noxus ult stun the da the enemy Dante. Leah immediately jumped into the air and knocked him into the air right after he got out of his stun. And then I ran in there and grabbed him the second he landed from Leah's <laughs> knockup. And it was just the, like the perfect execution of all three abilities led to he he could not kill us. Like he was and he was stupid fed, like 30 yeah. and two stupid fed. <laughs> but we blended this perfect execution of abilities to get in there and destroy him before he could do anything to us. Nice. It just felt so good to pull off. Like it was just really, really cool. <laughs> I think that most combos I saw were off of our Ron grabs. Because mm -hmm. that's a very clear indication that somebody's going to be standing in one place. Time to go in. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I think that's about all I had to say about the about the stress test. Yeah, I think that's it for me too. I'm looking forward to the next one or the alpha <laughs> or whatever you guys plan to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, you got anything to plug this week, Jelly? Uh, marvelous Monday yesterday. <laughs> no, I stream every week on Mondays, eight o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, Mountain Time. Mountain Time. We do Marvelous Monday on my channel, and then we play a game of whoever the previous week's winner was. Super fun, always a good time. Uh, happy to have anyone that wants to come join us. Join us there. What about you, Mangus? Anything to plug? Um, I think I got I got footage of every myth except for Malaya, and I'll be posting videos all throughout the week. Awesome. So, Sounds cool. good, man. Yay. All right. Yeah, that's going to close it out for this week. Uh, I hope everybody joined us as we entered the ether this weekend. <laughs> we finally got to get in there. I know a lot of people that I've been talking to in Discord and, and friends that of mine that were looking forward to the game got in there and had a, an absolutely great time. Um, I feel like now we have to have we have to go into season two of Enter the Ether. I know, now right? Done, we have entered, entered the, the ether. ether with us. Now it's like a, a thing. <laughs> like, oh, God, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to close it out now, so I guess... Bye! Hope you find your dad! <laughs> <laughs> Mangoose! Special shout-out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees Meow, Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.